Hi, art friends, and welcome back to the Outrageous Art Studio. Today's awesome art lesson is called Anansi the Spider. We are going to be focusing on the element of art called shapes, and we're going to be using shapes to create a spider collage based on Anansi the Spider. Oh! Here is what you'll need to get started. Construction paper, scissors, pencil, eraser, glue, and we're going to be using a ruler and a white colored pencil or oil pastel to make the spider web. Our essential question is, what types of shapes do artists use in their artwork? Well, we want to learn about the two main categories of shapes called geometric shapes and organic shapes. What are those? Well, geometric shapes are precise, regular, and often mathematical shapes. Organic shapes are more irregular and are oftentimes found in the natural world, like a leaf. So let's give it a try. Did this famous artist who made this bronze sculpture of a spider use more geometric shapes or organic shapes? Hmm, what do you think? Interesting. I would have to say organic, probably because of the shapes that are more irregular, curved, and they don't really have straight and even edges. So I'm gonna say organic for this one. Now that we know all about shapes, let's find out who was Anansi the spider. He is one of the great folk heroes of the world. He is a rogue, a mischief maker, and a wise, lovable creature who triumphs over larger foes. In the traditional Ashanti tale, Anansi sets out on a journey, and he gets threatened by fish and falcon and has to be saved by his sons. There are so many fun stories that you can find about Anansi, and all of them are considered to be trickster tales. This is where a character in the folktale appears as an animal, but has human-like characteristics and traits, like they can talk and think. Now that we've learned about shapes and tricksters, let's start drawing our spider web. We're going to choose an orange or red piece of paper. We're gonna need a white colored pencil and a ruler, and we're gonna start drawing a horizontal line through the middle of our paper and a vertical line through the center of our paper. We're also going to use our ruler to draw two straight diagonal lines through the center. Now starting in the center, we're going to be drawing curved lines in the shape of a U, and we're going to go around and around to create a pattern. The further you get out to the edge of the paper, you can leave a little more space so that it seems like the web is getting further away is optional, but if you want to make your lines thicker, you can trace over them with a white oil pastel. Now it's time to make our spider's body. I took a black piece of paper and I folded it in half twice, and then I cut out two squares. Once I had the squares, I folded one and cut out a triangle for Anansi's body. Something cool that I learned about spiders is that unlike insects, they have eight legs instead of six, and their bodies have two parts, not three. So as long as you have two parts to your spider's body, it really doesn't matter what shape you use. I also used rectangles to make the eight legs of my spider. Then I used some different colors of paper to add details to my spider, like a face and a pattern on its belly. I actually made my spider look kind of like a black widow with the red hourglass on its abdomen. So get creative and make a cool face for your spider. One other thing that I really like to do to make the spider web even fancier is I use glue to put along the white lines and then I sprinkled a little bit of glitter to make the spider web really shiny. Once you're finished with your spider, then you can make up your own awesome trickster's tale to go with your artwork and share it with others.